Yeah. Something get personal. personal. Listen. <laughs> Observing, I'm watching myself come up. The mirror been telling me I'm the one up next Check it, I'm working until the sun up No sleep for the wicked, guess I'm the one that Salem gotta run up I'm that two-tone colored motherfucker, boy, what up? I'm undeniable in the city, boy, what up? The only guarantees in life are tax, death, and change And the fact that he's elusive, i bound to blow up They been calling my bluff for years, but I hung up They been claiming that hip-hop is dead, well, boy, I dug up I, I, I hit him with the mix like it's dominoes I took him off the table, made him hush up Ladies and gentlemen, I go by the name Easy Lucid. I'm the two-tone motherfucker that's going to own it all. Remember that? Y'all are watching the come up in real motherfucking time. Be about it, to hear about it. That's, can I swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, shit, okay, because I was just going hard, and <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know if I could be, if this was a PG show or not. PG? But, uh, nah, no, but I heard people were swearing, so I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. you I'm know okay. who was swearing. What up? She will not be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> what up, man? Uh, Damn, that was hard, bro. Thank you. I thought you were thank gonna you. keep going. Like I was like, shit. It's a hard I intro song, now. It is. It is. We actually gotta talk to you guys about like doing an intro for us, but you know that's for off, off the camera. camera chats. <laughs> off camera. Well, I'm ready when you're ready. We ready when you're ready. Oh, weird. Everyone's ready. As he said himself, this is Izzy Lucid, guys. Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> <laughs> the one and the only um, If you've been watching us You you would know that um, He was mentioned like twice already <laughs> In a row <laughs> You know He's got his loyal lights What? What do you call it? Support his, uh, uh, the <laughs> Colleagues know What What did X call it? Cult X, X <laughs> called it something in his in his interview his what, what did he say? What? He said like he's, Yeah, when you go and you support people mm. And you sh- you show up for people, then you know you gotta keep. You gotta showing up. up. You mm-hmm. gotta keep showing up. So, yeah, it's just everyone shows up for everyone. So, yes, sir. I'm lucky to have those kinds of people around me that that allow me to show up for them and allow themselves to show up for me. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm happy. I'm I'm extremely happy. But we appreciate it. We appreciate. We appreciate you for coming through, man. Um, yeah, for sure. I know it was kind of like a for last sure. minute thing, but <laughs> you pulled it out. I'm always ready to work. You made it happen. True to everybody else's word, that yeah, you are there. You're that guy. Always, <laughs> always. Hopefully, yes, hopefully. Sir. <laughs> so as you know, welcome to another episode of Quite the Ordinary Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, your boy Earth Too Big, aka the Artful Dodger, aka the Big Stepper, and we're here with uh, episode nine. Nine. Yeah, episode nine. Episode nine. Yeah, man. So we're still going strong. Your favorite midweek show. We're here weekly and bringing you nothing but the dopest creatives in Mzanzi. Trying to make this like the biggest platform for creatives. So, you know, holler at your boy, subscribe, like, share, leave a nice comment comment on YouTube, Insta. Donate money. Donate money. You know, we've got Patreon there. Send your bank card one time, eh? the picture back and front. You know, you know. CVV number and everything. There we go. (laughs) Finally, someone that's aligned. You know, you know. If you ever need someone to come in weekly to be your soundboard, eh? yeah, yeah. I can, I can, um, I can, I can make all the effects. You know, what's that? What's that one that the DJs use on Virtual DJ? That like, which one is that? The 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 horn sound. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Really, you like that? <laughs> no, 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 no. No. <laughs> no, no, I don't like that. All right, but a little bit about the boy. Mm-hmm. Is he lucid? All right. So he's a dynamic 25 year old hip hop artist hailing from the vibrant streets of Ernadale. I pronounced that right. Ernadale, uh, yeah. Ernadale, yeah. <laughs> and growing up in the south of Johannesburg with a passion for music that dates back to, th- to 2009. Lucid has been honing his craft and captivating audiences with his electrifying performance since 2012. Not only has he made waves as a talented artist, but he has also proven himself as a valuable member of the music industry. I learned that over the past two weeks. You know, serving <laughs> as MT's trusted road manager in 2022. Oh, we're about to get into that one. <laughs> uh, tons of stories. Yeah, stories there. <laughs> His latest music displays uh, Lucid's lyrical prowess, catchy melodies, and infectious energy, uh, further solidifying his position as a rising star in the hip-hop scene. 
And uh, Lucid has concluded many highly successful self-organized tours and shows, which took him to various spaces, solidifying his reputation as an engaging live performer. Izzy Lucid is known not only for his musical talent, but also for his striking appearance. <laughs> Shout out Chad <laughs> GPT. <laughs> With his half blonde, half black, two toned hair, and unique tattoos, you, you, you had to put the tattoos in there, right? Hey, man, <laughs> you know, <laughs> take this up for Chat GPT. I just inputted things. Listen to you. <laughs> he effortlessly stands out in a crowd, reflecting his vibrant and, indi and individualistic personality. With his unwavering passion, captivating music, and dedication to his craft, is elusive is poised to leave an indelible mark on the hip-hop industry and continues to inspire audiences worldwide. Ma, 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 ma. There we go. There we go. Let's get into the hair first, bro. The hair. Why the half blonde, half black? What's up? You know, it started off as just a uh, act of rebellion or like one of those things where it was like, it was just after COVID, like mm -hmm. hard lockdown just ended. And I was like, fuck this. Like, I can swear, eh? Oh, yeah, I did ask that question. Okay, <laughs> shop. <laughs> so it was just after a hard lockdown, and, like, I had had COVID at that point. And then, um, like, COVID. the, yeah, like, right, right. I, the, the, the isolation, like, messed with my Crazy. head heavily. Yeah. Like, it completely, and at that point, I had long hair. Like, I had really long hair. And then, um, I was just like, fuck this, I'm going to keep, by the way, just to be fully transparent. Yes, sir. I can go off topic a lot, ne? So if I'm like doing three no, sub no, stories no, within three good, sub stories, you just good. you bring me back, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just all right, cool. So yeah, so um, I was like, I need to, I need to leave. So I booked the flight to Cape Town. I was like, I'm gonna go visit my brother. I don't care how I'm getting back or how I'm, whatever happens happens. I'm just going. I can't be in Joburg anymore. I have to go. Yeah. And then the week before I left, uh, I was on this tip of like. We're all in lock, hard lockdown. We spent the past few months just like sitting at home, binging TV and all of that bullshit. Like, let's just go out and like, let's like be spontaneous and do some random shit. What were you binging? And like, Money Heist. Funny go. enough, was the only thing <laughs> I binged because I'm actually mad at myself because I never allowed myself to rest at that, at, during that hard lockdown. I was yeah. busy learning Spanish and freaking trying to write music and, you know, doing all of that shit. But yeah, so um, Money Heist was the only thing that I binged. Mm. If it, there was a couple of movies here and there, yeah, but like Money Heist was the only series that I've been just love that show though, love it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so um, I was on this tip of like the week before I left for Cape Town, I was like, nah, I'm gonna push all my friends and we're all gonna be like spontaneous. I'm just gonna do random shit. We're gonna go mm. hike randomly. We're gonna go run around and play soccer in the rain and all of this bullshit. And then I thought, yo, what if I just like dye my hair? And then I dyed like a strand of the long hair blonde. Okay. And then from there, when I cut my hair, it was like a small little patch. And then eventually it grew and I did more and I did more until I did the full half hair. And then mm -hmm. everyone that I came across was like, oh, you know, the one thing I remember about you is your hair. The one thing that I that's, that's so memorable and so recognizable about you is that you have this two-tone thing going on. And I was like, oh, shit. Well, okay. Bet then. Mm -hmm. Bet. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it going. Let's go. So now, yeah, I'm that two-tone motherfucker. I don't think it's changing anytime <laughs> soon. You Maybe it'll what? change colors, but two -tone yeah. Two-tone motherfucker who wants what? to own it all. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's the one. Uh, the first so, time I yeah. heard that was at um, Field of Fade. At Barber Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we edited that part out. <laughs> now, Q said no. No editing. It's, it's going out. It's live. <laughs> it's going out. Okay, so yeah. where, where did the passion for like um, the art come from? And um, where did you get the name? Is he lucid? What's your in fact, what's your government name? My government name my government name is Aston Ghani. Aston Ghani. Yeah. Okay. So um where I got the name Is he Lucid. The easy part is just this not, not, not nothing special. I just I was walking up the road one day, I was looking for a rap name like in that period of time. Walking up the road and I E Z Y was like graffitied on the wall and I was like, Oh shit, that's cool and then I just took it as I double Z Y. But the lucid yeah. part came via like my whole message and my whole purpose that i feel like i'm on earth for i feel like not a lot of people have the the blessing and, and the, the opportunity to find out what their purpose on earth is fact, fact, and fact. for me I, f I learned a long time ago that my my purpose on earth is to help people grow into themselves mm. um and i'm also really big on like chasing your dreams and living your dreams and doing what you love and chasing that's why i'm so like dedicated to this music shit because it's like it's 
it's my passion it's my it's it's, it's you know the vehicle that helps me drive my purpose mm. so um i used to like i had like a couple of lucid dreams in my life and what lucid dreaming is is like in your dream you realize you're dreaming and it's like some inception shit where you can like control shit and it's like it's, it's pretty cool so i i had it like maybe once or twice in my life two three times maybe yeah. so that's where the lucid part came in because like yeah. i'm all about controlling your dreams chasing your dreams maintaining your dreams and achieving them all so yeah that's 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 the part of the lucid how this all started though um yo how far back do you want me to go um <laughs> when did you uh okay when did you decide that okay um this is what i'm gonna do i'm going um, 10 toes deep 10 toes deep yeah 2011 grade 8 2011 2011 grade 8 so my brother used to actually make music um he started off with hip-hop and then he went into house music and um when he was in his phase of doing hip-hop music i used to like draw inspiration from him but at that point i didn't know that i wanted to do music i was just like wow like you're doing crazy shit like shout out to you you know mm -hmm. and then um in grade eight i actually <laughs> i stole his beats and <laughs> stole them <laughs> i stole his beats and i like met these other guys from school and i like I introduced myself as a producer and I played them these beats and oh shit, you're so hard because they were rappers at the time and they're like, yeah. oh shit. And then they eventually found out that I was lying when the beats finished because at that point, my my brother stopped producing hip hop. So, you know, <laughs> so the, the beats, the beats were coming. fine. You know, the beats <laughs> weren't coming up. So yeah. I, had, I had to come clean at some point and, and um, that's when they started bringing me into the rap shit. And then I started writing from there on. That was grade eight, grade nine. I started performing um grade 10 i really started recording and started getting into my own sound and my own um my own kind of story grade telling 10. grade 10 yeah it's oh, just 2013 yeah. Yeah. and then from there i guess the rest is history i studied sound engineering um i flunked out of sound engineering because i spent all my time in studio yeah. and i didn't give a damn about the assignments and shit so to this day i don't have the qualification but yeah so but yeah you know what you're doing i know what i'm doing and then <laughs> From there, it was the events. It was, you know, releasing my music. And then I got a job with a management company. That's where the MT thing comes in. Oh, okay. So um, there was this guy that, that was at my very first event. And he heard me performing. And he pulled me aside. And he was like, oh, shit, you know what? You know, you, you've got some talent. Your storytelling is great. Your rapping is great. Like, I'm, I'm, I manage this and this and he like name dropped a bunch of artists mm. and i was like oh shit okay cool you know you, we can work together and then he sent me a couple beats i sent it back and then you gave me notes and all of that and then he employed me as a brand manager mm. because he was like nah your music's not ready like calm down like relax you know um you will keep working and i sent him like three or four demo like the entirety of 2022 from july till 20 okay 20 december yeah this was 2022 all right till December I would send him like three or four demos a week on top of Damn. me doing the work that I was doing for him on top of me traveling with MT mm -hmm. on top of all of that you know it was it was all just me pushing three to four that's how I kind of grew my sound to what you, what you're hearing right now and what what you see right now mm -hmm. going on the road with MT and stuff like I was in studio with him maybe two, two times two or three times and like I would listen I would listen to the way they do things and see the way they do things look at their vocal chain and say oh they've got that plug in there they're using this EQ there and like I try and implement that at home and you know all of these learning curves is how I got to the point that I am today with my sound just to I guess answer your question like I said I, <laughs> I answer mm -hmm. things in long-winded ways but yeah no it's perfect man it's perfect that's fine, man. How was it like though with with like MT? That must have been a oh my god! That must have been crazy. Yo, that like <laughs> I've been waiting for someone to ask me about that so yeah. I can talk about it. Uh. Um, yeah. So from July, I started traveling with him. So I I was his road manager, and um, we'd go to about three gigs a night. Damn. From Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday sometimes yeah. thursday i helped him with uh i helped them with the the born to win music video on stc mm. i helped put that together um and then like just being on the road with him was just i learned like i can't like tell you how much i learned and how many people i met and how many relationships i formed you know i mean mm. i have a song coming out with lolly native in june yeah, and yeah. he signed to mt records and that's how i built the relationship with lolly native you know mm. there's there's a lot of people that i that i that i that i kind of connected with during that time and then just like being like I, I don't know i guess this is just an artist thing but like even if 
it's like Danny Knox was saying uh, in her podcast, she was saying something about, you know, how addictive it is being on stage. Yeah, yeah. And I think as an artist, even if you're not the one on stage, like you can kind of like, I was vicariously, because at that point I wasn't releasing music, I wasn't performing or anything. Mm. So I was kind of living vicariously through MT. Through yeah, yeah. Like I'd be there at the, like at the side of the stage watching him go on and watching everyone go nuts for We Up and Roll Up and all of those songs. And like, they love him. Like, like I didn't, like I knew he was big. Yeah. But until I started traveling with him, I didn't know exactly so how much people loved him. Like he's, he's really yeah, iconic yeah. in this country. So yeah. I was kind of living vicariously through him in that mm-hmm. sense. So even just learning the way he performs and stuff like like, like that. Like um, another example would be when uh, we went to Nasty C's uh, tour in, what is that place called? Empress Palace. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, that was actually the last night that I road managed for him before my management company like cut ties with him and stuff like that. And they went their own way. And I guess we went our own way. Mm. Um I was on stage like taking videos for MT because I'd like take the videos and send it to him and stuff like that. Right. And like I was on stage taking the videos of him and Nasty C performing. But mm. then like I stepped back and I was listening to what the crowd interpreted as like what they what they um what's the word? What what they interacted with and what they what they really took took to took from in terms from. of melody, in terms of what Nasty and MT are saying. I was even there when, when AKA was performing, when Nadia was performing, when Casper, like I was there really trying to pay attention to, okay, what are they gravitating towards? And then how do I apply that to my own music? Mm. So like, yeah. So it's just that entire process. It was like three months that I was with him as mm. a road manager, but the amount of shit that I learned, it's invaluable. It's, it's, in, it's, it's really priceless. It's absolutely priceless. Would you say that's like your your high point um, so far? Yeah, Obviously, actually, you're more coming, you know. Actually, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. <laughs> you can ask you can ask anyone that I'm around. Like the amount of times I talk about that era and how mm. much I missed that era. Like we were at Feel the Fate Sundays, like this, this past Sunday, mm. and one of MT songs came up, and me and my girl were standing outside, and I was like, ah, oh, shit. I this remember. reminds me, you know, <laughs> and then even Juni was like standing, uh, another like person that I collaborate with, Juni, uh, Starlight Session, she was standing there and she turned to me and was like, oh, doesn't this remind you of your days, you know? Yeah. So I definitely say it is a high point for me. Um, mm. It's something that I don't think I'll ever forget. Mm. And if I could go back two, three years and experience everything, the good, the bad shit that I've been through, I'd still, if I like I had to take the bad shit that I've been through and go through that all over again, I'd still yeah. take it because of the shit that I like. I gained mm. being on that path for those few months with MT. It's, it's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. So you just knew from the beginning what you wanted to do then? It's, yeah, it's, uh, 100%. I mean, yeah. at six years old, my parents bought me, you know, those little play play laptops that you get kids in, and then it has like an English section and yeah, a math yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. So this one had like a music section as well, it had like a little keyboard piano thingy. And you could like it, te- it teaches you songs. I didn't give a damn about the math section. I didn't give a damn about the English. I went straight for the music section, yeah. and I learned Happy Birthday, like how to play piano, Happy Birthday. And then my mom bought me when I was like eleven or twelve. My mom bought me one of those, you know, those bigger keyboards, those Casio motherfuckers. Mm. And then I learned some stuff there. And then obviously high school happened, and then ASE happened, and I learned more music in terms of piano and guitar and stuff like that. And it's just it was a snowball effect. I've 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 literally never known. A passion for anything else like I do like with music. This. It's it's something that consumes me. I like I don't know if it's a bad thing or not, or like, yeah. but it's it's just it it drowns me. It drowns Absolutely you. drowns me. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see, okay, you've got the you've got the management thing going on mm. and you've got the music thing going on. Mm. What's the difference? Because I know there's there's been an artist and that's just, you know, doing your thing, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then there's like what you're doing, what I've seen you doing, like the event management yeah, thing, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So basically, like with the event management, um, my biggest tougher? thing, mm, I, I don't know if it's tougher. I'll be honest. Like maybe it's just because I've gotten used to the way an event is supposed to go. Mm. But um, I think, I don't think it's tougher because it's a lot easier to put on an event than it is to be an artist mm. in the sense of, with an event, you just pull up to a venue, you tell them your story, you give them your proposal. If they say yes, you go. If they say no to ticket sales or whatever, you you know, you 
you, you work out the business side of it and there's not many very variables that that are unknown with an event you know mm. the only thing that's really unknown is do you know if people are going to come to the event but then with an artist from an artist standpoint it's a lot more difficult because of the fact that you have to kind of uh there's too many unknown variables that being an artist. You don't know if people are going to like your music. You don't know if you even like your music. You don't know if you're good enough. You don't know if, if, if you're doing enough. You don't know if you're, like, if you're making enough moves. You don't know if you're meeting enough people, if you're yeah. putting enough music. Like, you never know because at least with an event, there's a formula, right? Yeah. Whereas being an artist, no, no artist like myself and X can do the exact same thing but have two different outcomes. Mm. So there's no exact one formula for each. Everyone has their has to figure out their own formula. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I think the fact that being an artist doesn't have a formula makes it a little bit more difficult than than the event management side of things. Because I've seen like with we've had a few artists here, so mm. some of them are like, okay, we don't fuck with the event management yeah. type of yeah. you know, field. Like we just we just want to sing. You for know what sure. I'm for sure, fucks our mentals. <laughs> yeah, a lot of shit goes on on this <laughs> side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And there are some who like Balwanda. He he operates on both sides. Yeah, like, just like you. Yeah, you know. And he's like, shit. This sure. side, it's crazy. You know, I, I never knew like it, making an event could be this stressful. You know, for sure, it is definitely that. It is when definitely stressful for yeah. sure, one hundred percent. Because especially if you're an artist and an event curator, like. Yeah. Cause now you have to on the night of the event you have to worry about is the event going smoothly? Then you have to prepare yourself to perform. You have to also prepare your set list. You have to prepare you know all the things that you need to do as an artist. But you also need to be there for this and this and this artist. Make sure this person's on time. Make sure that's set up. Make sure that sound is going good. If this is going wrong, so it's like you're juggling too many things. So he is very very correct in saying that it's like it's very stressful to like juggle both the things. Truth. But that, yeah. that like fucks with your mental. Like it does. It really artist, does. Like, you're like, about to go on stage. Some shit ain't going right here, you know? Actually, you know, the crazy thing about that is, for me, I think it's a stress reliever. Like, Really? <laughs> as, like, I find that when, I, when I'm performing for, for other people's events, yeah. the nerves just, it, it destroys me. Mm. But if I'm doing my own event, I'm so occupied with everything leading up to my performance, I don't have time to think about being nervous or the stage fright or anything like that. So when I go on stage, I'm, I already click that switch and, Boom. and I'm on, you You're know? Ready. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no time to think about what ifs. There's no time to oh what if you mess up? You know, like I mean I messed up earlier in the song and that I performed, you know. It's just like yeah. there's no time to think of what if you're just going. You just need to go. So for me personally it's the opposite. Mm. I, I find it to be less stressful doing both than That's doing crazy. one or the other because you're both preoccupied, so you don't get to think of what if something goes wrong with either mm. entity, so to speak. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that shout out to you, man. Most people can't do that. Like for sure. they really can't. For sure, it really gets to them for some reason. Not for some reason. I, I know <laughs> it's hectic. I get it. I I get it. It's hectic. Um, I can imagine you know uh, trying to be an artist and juggling event management yeah. at the same time. I can imagine it can be really stressful. For but sure, a lot of people are trying to do that now, especially the yeah yeah yeah. But you see, also the other thing is what I like about it is that there's a lot more spaces coming up now that allow people to do that. Like. Mm. Before, you'd have maybe one or two venues that are interested in that. But now, the way the way the world is and society is, you know, going, mm. a lot of venues aren't just, like, aren't pulling enough people by just, you know, oh, we sell food and sell liquor and, you know. Mm. But now, when you add live performers and you add live DJs and, you, like, there's a, more of a factor to draw people in. You mm. know what I'm saying? So... Um, I think a lot of people are opening up more, more to to too. allowing people to c be creative in their space, and it's not like you said; it's not always easy. Yeah, but sometimes it's really, it really is worth it. That's correct. Honestly, because well, shout, out to, shout out to you guys. For, yeah, for sure. For like doing this shit, man. Because I know most of the time, it, it, it comes out like out of pocket. Mm. You know, and mm -hmm. that's crazy. That's crazy. Man. Yep. That's the you need. You need to know that this is what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Because oh, oh. when you see that 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 red line it, yeah. and you see that red number, it's 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 not it's not nice. But it's, it's you know, not. when but you I think, uh, we were talking to the guys from uh, the sobering, and they were like, mm -hmm. um, one thing that we learned is don't don't stop. 
Because if you stop, it's a loss. You just got to keep on going. Yep. Yeah. Yep, keep 100%. On That's, it's it's you stop, consistency. It's a loss. It's consistency yeah, at the end of the day. You got to... Exactly. I mean, like... I'll give you an example, right? I went on tour last year. Yeah. Um, between... For, it was the month of April. I hit four different venues once a week, right? Mm. And I made 10 grand on that tour, mm. but I spent 11. So I made a thousand rand loss. Yeah, okay. And it's like, it was also at a time where a lot of shit was happening in my personal life. Mm. So it was like, it was hard for me to juggle the decision to, to, to do that and still try and figure out my life. So it's like, yeah. when you really truly are dedicated to this music shit, it's 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 a lot easier to make that decision. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier to say, okay, this shit will pay. Yes, I'm losing now. Yes, I'm 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 losing money now. I'm pulling out five hundred rand and I'm going home with nothing. I'm pulling out a thousand rand. I'm going home with three hundred rand. Like, it's 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 a lot easier to make that decision when you know what's coming and what's what's in the future. You see what mm. I'm saying? So yeah. That's, That's fair, man. Shout out to you. Man. Shout Hopefully, out I'm not giving out, out toxic to advice. Please, nah. please stop me. <laughs> So it's like what we said last time. To Lulu is Salulu. The Lulu is the Salulu, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is what it is, man. You gotta. You go know, in. this shit consumes you, and and then it really is addictive. And and I think I wouldn't have it any other way. I right. think the only the only way you make great art is is if you drive yourself a little crazy. Yeah. You know. Facts, facts, facts. So you're gonna. You've got another track for us, right? I do. Okay. I do this. So this song. <laughs> no, but but before that. Okay. All right, I'm just checking. I want to play a little game with you, man. All right, let's play a game. Because uh, it's a special year for this for a certain album. I'm not going to give it oh, away. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's already off to a bad start. So, yeah. You should know it. I don't know, man. I mean, you're, you're, you're the rapper. <laughs> Ish, but you see, I'm one of those rappers. I don't... I don't... Ish, I don't uh, I'm not well, well, well <laughs> knowledge. Ah, well knowledge on on new music Don't or any pull music. Don't hey, nah, Give me the classics. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you all the classics. Um, so I'm gonna give you the lyrics, and then I, you're supposed to guess the track. Yeah. For sure. All right. You ready? Oh Lord, no, but let's do it. <laughs> all right. Um, this is easy though. Now that I'm looking at it. Back in elementary. I thrived on misery. Let me alone. I grew up amongst a dying breed. I'm not asking for help. It's okay. <laughs> Don't use Shazam, then. <laughs> In the background. I'm not Googling under the table. It's cool. <laughs> um, the misery. Inside my mind, couldn't find a place to rest until I got that thug life tattered on my chest. Is that not Tupac? <laughs> you looking at my phone, AJ. I'm not. I promise. I can't even see that far. I promise which you. Which song? Which song? Yo, me, I don't know which song. I can't <laughs> idea. But I know it's Tupac. So many tears. Ah, okay. You see, I told you I'm not well-versed. That's my that's my toxic trait. I don't keep up with music. As As an artist, I don't keep up music. Okay. Are we doing another one? Yeah, another one. All right, let's get it. When I was young, me and my mama... Had beef. 17 years old. Kicked out. <laughs> kicked out of the streets. Though back at that time, I never thought I'd see her face. Ain't no woman alive that could take my mama's place. Mama's place. Isn't that uh, Shout dear out mama? mama? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one I at least dear know. Mama. That yeah, one I know. know. At least. That was an easy one. Yeah. Ish. Yo, don't tell me it gets harder. Um. <laughs> Yo, I need to start listening to music, guys. <laughs> Shit. Now let me welcome everybody to the <sighs> to the wild, <laughs> wild west. Oh, is that not Will Smith? No. No. <laughs> Ah, ah, oh, shit, I'm embarrassing myself. <laughs> a state that's untouchable, like Elliot does. Yeah. These people just, you see, once, once just give them a mic one time. <laughs> one time, just give them a mic, cause me, I, I don't, I don't know just the answer to that. Clues. The ah, track hits the your answer. eardrum like a slug to your chest. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm drawing a blank. I can't lie to you. I told you I'd be bad at this game. <laughs> It's two parts, bro. Huh? 
Yeah, it's California. California yeah, exactly. knows how to party. <laughs> okay. California, man. What if I what if I return the favor and I I reduce some lyrics and see if you can get it? Which what? All right, let's see. No man, he knows J Cole. He mentioned J Cole <laughs> on the other one. He mentioned J Cole on that other that other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I might know her. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Let's do the song. Ah, no. Now you see now it plays in the <laughs> It plays in the it. thing. Let's uh, go. No. Let's go. Nah, wait, okay. No. I'll even sing the song for you. <laughs> no, it played in the headphones. That, that's that's cheating. That's cheating. Okay, wait. Um, okay. We hug and yes, we make love and always just say goodnight. And we cuddle sure I do love it, but I need your lips on mine. Can you kiss me more? We're so young. We ain't got nothing to lose. It's just principle. Baby, hold me because I like the way you groove. Damn, who's that? Little Yachty? <laughs> <laughs> Very far. Doja. Still Doja. Doja? Yeah. You're going to give me, me Doja? More. Oh, me. Who doesn't know Doja? A real nigga like me. You're going to give oh, me Doja? Who doesn't know Doja, dog? <laughs> nah, <man. laughs> All right, I'm going to give you one. If you don't know this one, hey, I don't know, eh? Yo, you're going to lose hope. I must walk out one time. <laughs> <laughs> Slurring my words. Mm. Drunk off of nerves. Mm. I Sounds never familiar. learn how I get close and then show you all of the shit that you deserve. This ain't the movies. We got to get close and talk about everything all on my mind. I know the lyrics, but I don't know the song. I know the lyrics, but I don't know the song. I know That's those your lyrics. Your song, my song. <laughs> <laughs> I got played. I got played. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Slurring my words, drunk off a nose, that in love alone. How I get close and no, 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 all of you. You see, that song is so old, man. That song. Hi, why is this thing so high? That song is so old. No me. Yo. Damn, that's crazy. I didn't even know my own words. See, this is why I be forgetting my lyrics on stage. This is why I be forgetting my lyrics on stage because I don't pay attention to that's myself. Track, bro. Hey. What's going on? Yo, dog. I told you I'm done. Yo, hey, let's play a different game. Uh, I'll play a different game. Let's okay. play X's and O's or something. Uh, uh, uh. No, nah, it's, it's done. It's done. It's done. You can, you can give us the second track, man. Aye. Yeah. So the second track is a working title. So yeah. if you have if you have by the end of the song, if you have any suggestions for the name, or if anyone in the comments has suggestions for the name, yeah. because there's a wide debate on what the song should be called. People are saying it should be called Take Two. Someone is saying Can We? Someone is saying What? Take it again. And so the song, the song the song the song <laughs> is the song that's releasing at the end of this month on the thirtieth right. with Dandy Knox and Fortune Polite. Alright, alright. Um, right. But I'm I'm gonna perform a solo version because obviously ah. Yeah, I am. But there you are. You know? Dandy's in the building. Too. You know? I sh but it's fine. Okay. But it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. We'll do it like this. Let go. So, yeah. If you guys have, have, <laughs> have suggestions on names, please help. Help us. Because, <laughs> Yeah, ne. Okay. Let's try this out. Can we take it again? Can we take it again? Cause I don't wanna be your friend Girl, I wanna be your man Can we take it again? Can we take it again? Cause I don't wanna be your friend Girl, I wanna be your man Baby girl, I'm tired of playing these games with you Switching and not like exchanging the lane with you You say you feel alone, you calling me on the phone But soon as the sun rises, the shit ain't the same with you Whiskey on our breath, wine dripping all off our lips Drunk and falling round and slipping right through our grip Windows fogging in the whip, so good we lose our sense But when they ask about us, we flipping shit like a script Hey, hey, can we take it again? Cause I don't wanna be your friend Girl, I wanna be your man Can we take it again? Can we take it again? I don't, I don't Listen Roll with me 
hit the shows with me If you want it, then I got it, I'ma flow with it Hit you with a wave I'ma hit you with a wave Your way If you wanna roll with me Go home with me Everybody in the sun, nothing, 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 nothing. Hit you with a wave I'ma hit you with a wave Listen Girl, let's cut all the nonsense You know I got options I don't need all these bitches I'm trying to tug on your heartstrings Put my tongue on you I'm just trying to be honest I know you've been around But still this dick on your conscience Got this dick in your tonsils Divided and conquer Making movies every night And let the song be the soundtrack You gon' fuck around and fall for me Yeah, you know you've been the one for me Hey Can we take it again? Cause I don't wanna be your friend Girl, I wanna be your man Can we, can we Can we take it again I don't wanna be your friend Girl, I wanna be your man Hey Yeah, so that song still needs to be named But it is definitely coming out on the 30th of March Featuring Dandy This is the solo version You saw I messed it up there Because I don't know the lyrics Because it's just like You know the solo version But it's fine, yeah, it's fine. Featuring Dandy Knox Featuring uh, Fortune Polite Produced by King Tips Shout out to King Tips by the way That's fire bro Do you get AKA from that song? Be real with me Nah Thank you Nah Thank you for once <laughs> Actually at this conversation um, I won't mention the rapper <laughs> <laughs> but we were sitting down at my friend's house cues and then we're like this guy came on and we're like dude that is like aka dog yeah that's aka i won't mention the rapper who it is now but you like he literally switched but you this one that you just performed nah i don't nah. who's been saying that who like, be lying to you yo dude I, I can't lie to you once a week at least someone must come to me and tell me i sound like keenan I don't know if it's because I'm a colored rapper also or what, but that's... Oh. Nah, I don't get it. It's crazy. I don't but I mean, it. I take it as a compliment. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know... He, yeah, he's a goat. He's a goat. He's, a goat. he's yeah. a goat. And yeah. if, if, if someone sees that energy in me, I'm happy. He is but, a goat. Yeah. I'm not he gonna is. say he was. No, no. He is and will he always is. be. Yeah. The legacy. But facts. Facts, man. Facts. Uh, what do they call it? The legacy. Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, leave... <laughs> Something inspirational for the kids, man. We call this, we call this preachy as fuck. Preachy as fuck. <laughs> preachy as fuck. <laughs> uh, copyrights mm. pending. Pending. <laughs> they belong to Dandy there, but you know, she gave it to us, so, so she, she can't charge us. She can't run the <laughs> check. <laughs> I'm just saying. No courts. No <laughs> courts, eh? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, okay, something inspirational. Um, Shit, okay. Okay, so there's a quote that I love by. Yeah, yeah. Leap and the net will appear. Mm. Um, I read it in a book hey. called The Artist's Way. I like Way. that, I like that, I like that. yeah. Um, great book. Every artist out there or any, any creative, any, like, just read that book. It's called The Artist's Way. It's, it's amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, Leap and the net will appear, I mean... It's pretty self, pretty self-explanatory. Hey, use your English. You see, you see I, this is what I was telling you. You make people nervous when, when you bring them here, you know? Ah, it's the alcohol. <laughs> it's the alcohol. <laughs> so um, it just means that take the leap. Like you might not think that there's security in something or you might want to be looking into going into something and then like pursuing something and you might not be able to see down the road. Maybe it's foggy where you're standing, but trust that it clears up eventually. Trust that, you know, when you jump, they'll, the net will appear. Just jump. Mm. Just take the leap. Like, you don't have time to waste. Mm. Mm. Just just go. Just run. This isn't talking about suicide, by the way, right? <laughs> so we don't, no. We don't <laughs> promote that. We're yeah, all about thanks. mental positivity and, mm. you know, that kind of thing. But, yeah, leap and the net will appear. Whatever you're trying to go through or go for right now, mm. just do it. Just do it. It's 2024. We have no time to waste. It's already almost April. Just jump. Facts. Just take Facts. the leap. Just Facts. jump. I like That's that. That's it. I like that. I like that. Ma, 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 ma. On my own sound. Bro. I'm going to take that <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I can record something in one of these buttons every time you press a button. I don't know. And then you'll just say, ma, 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 ma. <laughs> so suggest up all that one. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah. we, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, is he lucid? But oh, wait, 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 wait. Once again, real quick, what's what's in the future for you? What's in the future? Is there a new EP coming out? What's going on? Um, yo, ish, that question. Ah, <laughs> uh, so huh, I'll say this. Um, I am planning to release a lot of shit this year. Mm. Not just music, you know. I'm 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 starting to get into streaming and gaming and stuff like that now. All right, all so right. so I'm trying to look into getting into that. You know, my events are always gonna be my events. You know, mm. um, in terms of releases, like I said, I'm releasing that song that I just did now um, on the 30th of March. I'm releasing a song with Lolly Native on the uh, like sometime in June. Mm. Um, I do want to release an EP in September. Mm. Um, but we'll see how far that goes. We'll see how yeah, far that goes. Yeah. But definitely, I'm not gonna just because I won't might not release music at any given point. Um, there's a lot of plans for me to release content in general. You know. Yeah. Um, we'll yeah. see you. We'll see you in the set. We'll see you on 100%, the One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You you, you hear my name? Someone will shout me out. Effects. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. Somebody. More than once. Maybe <laughs> twice. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you can expect from me in the future. Things Effects. are gonna come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might not be music. Might be music. Hopefully, it's music. I need to get my shit together, really. <laughs> but Dandy also needs to shout out to, they're like, Dandy, you need to get your shit together. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, release something. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, now it's now it's out there on the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now she must release something. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to you, man. Shout out to you for coming through. Thank shout you. Out, man. Again. Thanks for having me. Thanks um, for the liquor. Thanks for the good conversation. Beautiful. I wish I, like, I forgot to bring the bottle, like, on the table, man. Like this empty glass thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. But well, shout out to you, man. Thank you for the two licks. If you guys want to see more of uh, Izzy, Izzy Lucid, um, this feel the fade Sundays, right? At Baba Sheep. At Baba Black <laughs> Sheep. <laughs> you can yeah, go through every, every single every Sunday. Sunday you can come through. Game. You can see what he's been, um, what he's doing up there, and um, you'll be with what Starlight, right? Starlight session. Um, yeah, they'll be joining me once a month. Well. Okay. Yeah, they'll yeah. be joining me once a month. So we're there. But if you want to see him every week. Every Sunday he's there. And if you want to perform also, join the movement at easylucid.com is the email. Let's go. Send your music. Let's go. At easylucid on all platforms. Let's go. There uh, we go. We're going to put the links in the bio. Ma, 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 but ma. Um, on that note, um, shout out to Chester Studios again for letting us use this beautiful facility. Hands down number one in Joburg and... I would say the country, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Quick question for you. Yeah. I want to flip something on you. All right. What made you want to start the podcast? A dollar and a dream. A dollar and a dream. <laughs> a dollar and a dream. Like That's Cole, fine. No, no, in fact, um, actually, it was just the fact that um, I wanted to do something exciting. And I wanted to do something with my friends. Yeah. Actually pay my friends and yeah. get paid with my friends. Um, because I grew up in the corporate world, you know. I'm, For sure, I'm a sales master and all that shit. Like, yeah. When it comes to corporate, yeah, I'm there, man. <laughs> I'm like, this is your I'm way to express guy. creativity. Yeah, that's but right. I've always had this creative side of me, so um, it was just a way of trying to fi- figure out like how I want to do it, and this was it. This yeah. is what clicked, and yeah. in a week, I found Jester Studios. Um, my home and why the name quite the ordinary podcast that was that was Q Q just came up with that actually that's cool as fuck yeah remember we had Never Rush we were there and I remember saying to him like dude this is like how I feel like how Kanye felt when he was in the building with um, Jigga Will Smith and all those yeah. guys but he didn't know and so I was there and I Never Rush and I remember saying that to him and he was like dude I'm with you to the wheels fall off. That's let's fine. go. That's you fine. Know? And I was like, let's do it. And since then, man, we've never looked back. We started this thing and we've been doing it ever since, man. And what are you looking to in the future? In the future? Yeah. 100 million subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. I really want this to be like the biggest podcast in Africa, in the world at some point. Mm. And um, I want, because I, I realize that there's a lot of gatekeepers and if we can make this platform the biggest one for creatives to hop on and yeah. just explode. For sure. That would be great. That would be awesome, man. That's our mission solved. Fine. That's, well, you're well on your it. way. Yeah, facts. Actually looking at it. <laughs> but, man, with guys like you supporting the vision, supporting the mission, 
We appreciate it. Thank you guys again. Shout out to Good Fund, uh, Good Luck Media for funding this episode, for funding us and uh, having us here every week. And yeah, on that note, guys, QTO gang, join our Patreon page, you know, live vicariously through us. We're going to be doing live stuff on Patreon. And so you should really get involved. But on that note, this is your boy saying peace out. (laughs) 